Hey, malnourished, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite albums. And today I'm going to be doing another humongous album review, another huge album review that I've been wanting to do for a while. And this would be the new um, Seinun Batang album, Sonol Moa, or in English, Bird's Eye Batang, Flood Format. Yeah. So in case you haven't heard of this artist before is because Everyone in the world has only heard of this artist like two weeks ago, but this artist is actually none other than the one and only Kong Jung Do Dok, Midair Thief. And if you don't know who Midair Thief is, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? Listen to his music. Now, to give you a bit of a background on who Midair Thief is, he is a South Korean electronic musical artist folk artist, singer, songwriter, producer, and he has been releasing an album and EPs in different names. He has released EPs under the name Hyo, he has released an album under the name Shadow Community, and uh, very famously he released two LPs, two studio albums under the name Midair Thief or Kong Jung Do Dok with the self-titled debut, which is an avant-garde freak folk album with a lot of interesting, intricate instrumentation and chords and song production. It's promising, it's strange, and, and if you want to check out this album, I highly suggest you listen to White Room and The Swamp. These two tracks are phenomenal. They are magnificent. However, what's even more magnificent is the album Crumbling, or Munojigi, released in 2018, which is slowly becoming one of my favorite albums of all times. Crumbling is a an otherworldly, fantastical, surreal experience. Basically, take the most beautiful imagery you've ever seen in your life and turn it into music. Boom! You have crumbling. And I'm not talking about any beautiful imagery. I'm talking about beautiful blue skies, blue water, green grass, trees, lily pads, lemongrass, little dragonflies here and there. It is honestly an album that's so beautiful and so gorgeous it could bring me to tears. The album opener, why? Ah, These Chains is one of the most beautiful pieces of music I've heard in my life. The chord progression on this thing is so crushingly immense and impactful. The uh, track uh, Curve and Light is just elegant to say the least. The multifaceted crumbling together and recently I've been listening to the track Dirt a lot and it's slowly becoming one of my favorites on the track list as well. Crumbling is just one of those albums where every single track somehow appeals to you and they all become great and and you just end up loving every single track off of the album even for the last track no answer which i at first thought is the weakest track on the album right now i love it just as much as i love the rest of the album it is a 10 out of 10 i gave it a 10 out of 10 and it's still a 10 out of 10 and i don't regret giving it a 10 out of 10. crumbling is a masterpiece to say the least it is phenomenal it's it's just beautiful it's transcending now Midair Thief didn't completely stop making music after crumbling. In the last year, he actually uh, made a fantastic appearance in the Sonny Boy soundtrack, which is one of my favorite anime soundtracks of all times, with two fantastic ambient tracks. And finally, he has returned this year with uh, Flood Format, aka Gathered Motions, under the name Bird's Eye Batang. Seinun Batang. About a couple of weeks ago, I found this weird bird's eye batang on radio music, clicked on it to find out that it's Midair Thief. And of course, I was super hyped up. I was extremely excited. So I went online and I tried to look for this album, but I can't really find it at first. And that's because this album's release is actually attached to a listening party. And the name, the original name for this album, the original English name is actually Gathered Motions, but it is somehow changed to Flood Format. So, uh, yeah, given that this album is released under Bird's Eye Batang and not Midair Thief, the music on this album is very much unlike Midair Thief. So if you're expecting a crumbling part two, 
Well, unfortunately, you're going to be a little bit disappointed because this album is actually more of an IDM ambient post-minimalist and neo-psych sound collage album. That is mostly, mostly synths. Take the very flowery, watery, waxy, plasticky synths of crumbling and make it even more abstract and weird and ambient and boom, you have this album. Now, even though I would really kill for a crumbling part two or something beyond that, it would be amazing. This album is honestly not bad. The album opens off with Mi Son Mi Coeur, or the official English translation is Slippery Smile. Also, I, I highly, even though I'm not Korean, I highly suspect that the English translations of the titles are actually very different from the actual title in Korean, but I'm going to use the English titles anyways. So Mi Son Mi Coeur, or Slippery Smile, starts off with a very spacey opening, and it's very quiet, it's very small. And then about 10 seconds in, you start hearing these rubbery, oily, watery, fluctuating synths that sound very plasticky. And these synths, they swell more and more, they get louder and louder, they get more and more frequent, and they sort of cycle again and again and again. We also hear some faint singing in the back. It's transportive. It's like we have entered a weird, trippy, abandoned amusement park. It sounds very interesting. And the track ends off with these watery noises, which really gives off the vibe that we are in a lake or in a river or in a pond or something. And I think given that the album cover is largely blue and given that the album is called Flood Format in English, I feel like one of the things going for in this album is water. Watery noises, watery sounds, watery synths, watery beats. Now we have the second track, Hyokko or tongue tracers with the skipping rhythms and bright synths. It's almost like I'm listening to Prince's Purple Rain, except it's more unhinged and more electronic. And in the middle, it sort of quiets down and it sort of rises back up. It's a really neat track. Next up, we have two of my favorite tracks on the entire album, Tolko Tol, aka Spin and Stone, is a track that is just jacks of all trades with clangy bells, processed vocal harmonies, and then suddenly it bursts into this really weird dance electronic section with drippy beats, echoey vocals, pounding beat, hand claps. It's weird. I've never heard Midair Thief make something like this. It's like a video game soundtrack. It's amazing. And then it just becomes weirder and weirder with these strange sections of vocals, some coughing noises, synths and chimes, it's all very random. That is followed with Ping Yi Ping, or Rip Plipling, which is easily my favorite track on the entire album. We had these watery, nimble synths that's just constantly flinging and flinging around like a school of fish. It's so visual, it's so striking, and it's so audio stimulating. It's, it's amazing. It's beautiful and wondrous and inspiring. And then it sort of builds up to a really dreamy, stargazy climax where the reverby vocal will sort of reach a peak and then it sort of quiets down again. It's a fantastic track. Just front to back, breathtaking. Now we are headed towards the second half of the album where the album takes more on an ambient side of things. We have wing wing or towards which is, um, <laughs> this track sounds like if Samsung has developed an electronic bird. It's full of these crunched up, muffled, processed burr chirping noises and these grinding <laughs> noises. It's like an animal. The whole track sounds like a recording of an animal, like a bird maybe, but it's made entirely of synths and bells and keyboards. Then we have Brux Batang, which is a straight up IDM track with a nice atmospheric backdrop, a constant beat. A minute or so into the track, we have another rhythm lazing on top of it with chimes and keyboards embellishments. In the second half, the track dissolves into white noise and these pounding synths. It's again, very stimulating. It's very dense and rich and interesting and it's fantastic. And then we have Sanshin, 
or The Wider the Wheel, which is a seven minute long multifaceted psychedelic ambient track with a very blissful first half, and then a really ominous and sinister middle section with its super compressed and reverby strings. It sounds like it came straight out of a horror movie. And the ending is just really random and weird, and I, in a way, kind of enjoy it. Even though it's not the kind of track I would just put on when I want to listen to music, I still think it's, um, it's a beautiful production. Finally, the album ends off with Su, or Are Your Wings Swept? And I think this is a pretty average and minimalist ending with clanging bells and buzzing noises. I'm not huge on it, but uh, it's not a bad ending. I'll, I'll tell you that. So uh, yeah, overall, uh, I am incredibly happy and excited for Midair Thief's return. I hope he releases an album under Midair Thief, under Kong Jung Dodo, because I'm salivating for a new Kong Jung Dodo. But this is still good. This is still good, don't get me wrong. I like the production on this. It's crisp, it's ambient, it's experimental, it's really fine. And I wish there is more of a theme going on in this album. Um, I like the watery themes, but I wish there was more going on because this doesn't this is just nowhere near as dense as Crumbling or his self-titled debut and it's not trying to be I mean after all it's released under a different name, but um, Still I do wish that he provides more, but I still enjoy this album My favorite track here is Replipling Pingy Ping and my least favorite is Wing Wing to or Tours. I'm giving Seinun Batang, Son El Moa, an 8 out of 10, strong 7 to a light 8. So, have you listened to the new Midair Thief, aka Bird's Eye Batang album from Wonder 10 Straight? Like it, like it, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.